first on your radio. First for sports. We are 540 ESPN. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, all over the world and here in southeastern Wisconsin to the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Damian Nelson here sitting alongside the man they call Meathead and the cause, Frank Costantino. We've got an action-packed show lined up for you this week, Monday, March 2nd, 2009. We are live, and you can join us by calling 276-ESPN. Again, that's 276-3776 locally here in southeastern Wisconsin. Or if you're listening all over the world, one 800 990 ESPN. Again, that's 1-800-990-3776. We are also live at pwrshow.com. The chatmosphere is blowing up. Go ahead, hop in and send us Chat your questions o- and play along Chat the chatmosphere o- at pwrshow.com. O- uh, Frank, yes. welcome. Thank you. I had something to say, but I don't recall what it was. That's all right. Uh, but anyways, this week we've got patience, everybody, for sticking around. That's what, yeah. That yeah, was because we know people were getting ready to listen to this program. That's why they were on at 10. But anyways, yeah. be that as it may, we've got a lot this week, including Bill and Doug joining us in just about 30 minutes for the first segment of Bill and Doug Uncut. We're going to talk about WWE Raw, TNA's Destination X, some WrestleMania notes, TNA notes, and especially some of the things that happened on Impact last week, our VI3, and a heck of a lot more along with the new PWR News Desk at the bottom of each hour. Uh, so, let's start off with WWE Raw from tonight. John Cena apparently no longer in WrestleMania. <laughs> I, I try not to laugh when I said that. <laughs> yeah, business the, is business, right? The big show named by new Raw general manager, interim general manager, as the uh, number one contender for Edge's championship. Obviously, this is just a bridge to WrestleMania. It's still going to be Cena Orton. I'm sorry, Cena Edge at WrestleMania for the World Championship. Gentlemen, your thoughts on Raw overall, where Rey Mysterio uh, failed to qualify for the Money in the Bank ladder match when what seemed like an obvious matchup. Jimmy the Superfly Snooker, yeah. Jimmy Superfly Snooker, also in the Piper's Pit, hosted by Chris Jericho tonight on Raw. Well, you want the whole the whole thing on Raw, or just your brief synopsis re- of what you synopsis? thought of the show? Well, obviously, it's they're starting to put the pieces together. Uh, I'll, albeit, it's a big puzzle right now for WrestleMania. I still think that it it might be Big Show, Cena, and Edge in a triple threat match uh, for the championship. But you know that that's my opinion. I might be totally wrong on that. The Rey Mysterio thing, eh, it's interesting. I Kane in the ladder match. It, it I don't know if that fits or not. I, they're just trying to find a place for him because maybe he just deserves to be at WrestleMania. Uh, but overall, I mean, the shows and with, with Triple H, it's all starting to fit together as they're trying to mold it. The one thing is we're waiting for is who will be Chris Jericho's opponent, uh, and there are rumors. We'll talk about that. All over the we'll talk about today. that in the in the next few minutes here on the show. But Meathead, your thoughts on WWE Raw? Oh, you're not going to welcome me to the show? I did. You no, you didn't. Spoke. You, you welcomed Frank. Osphere. I said Chad Osphere on my own without provocation. I said welcome Frank. Welcome, Meathead, to the Pro Wrestling Report Thank on you. 540 ESPN. I want my user. introduction. <laughs> Raw. You're like Harvey Wimpleman with the fink from a couple of years ago. And back. now, the rest of the story. <laughs> R.I.P., by the way. That's right. Uh, right here. You know, it, I think it's just a little bump. If No Way Out is supposed to be the road bump to WrestleMania, this is the road 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 bump to WrestleMania. It's just a twist, a turn, you know, a little uh, little nook, a little cranny. To uh, have some crumbs fall in. Just a little twist. And we begin our coverage of WrestleMania this week. Five weeks of WrestleMania as we count down our top five WrestleManias leading up until 
the week before WrestleMania right here on PWR Radio on 540 ESPN. Again, you can join us, folks, the number 276-3776 locally or 1-800-990-3776 all over the world. Let's continue talking about some World Wrestling Entertainment notes. And it's been around for about three or four weeks back on ECW. We saw a tremendous matchup last week between him and Jack Swagger for the ECW Championship. Swagger! Your thoughts on Christian's utilization in WWE since his return. Jack Swagger! I've been going around for a couple weeks saying that. Thank you, Christian. (laughs) Who's got a worst lift? Lift, Him or uh, Cody Rhodes? Uh, Jack I think Cody might be a little worse. Has the worst list. Frank, your thoughts on how they've utilized Christian. On this we month. talked about how uh, he could be being punished. ECW was a bit of a surprise yeah. for him to be put on. He certainly leapt into the main event picture. We thought we would get that main event match at WrestleMania between the two, Jack Swagger and Christian. However, it happened last week on ECW, and it was quite the match. But, Frank, your thoughts on the utilization of Christian so far in WWE? Bumping ECW is the best I could think of. Is it a punishment? We don't know. We don't know that for a fact. If it is or not, somebody getting a job can't be punishment. Just in my opinion, right? So, uh, if to be on ECW to get, uh, I could see that meeting. All right, Christian, I know this sounds odd, but put it on ECW because we just want to grab those fans that want to see you right away and bump up ECW's numbers so the advertisers are happy. That's what I think happened in that meeting. Uh, eventually, well, if if everything goes right and Christian stays stays healthy, he could move up, quote unquote to SmackDown or Raw. Well, you know but, what? I think this is just a temporary thing, though, Frank, because yeah. remember the draft is coming April 13th. So, I mean, right after WrestleMania, I mean, literally the week after WrestleMania, Christian will be bumped over to Raw or SmackDown. So this is just, as you said, a way to bump up ECW yep. and then move Christian into something a little more prominent. Granted, it's only been a few weeks, but we haven't, seen, we haven't seen a bump in ECW ratings as a result of Christian being on, but we did see some good wrestling action. Your thoughts, gentlemen, on that match? For the championship with Jack Swagger last week it was solid. I think it was solid. Did you think solid. Jack Swagger could bring it? Did you think Jack Swagger could do a match like that? No, no. I, I'm surprised by it, and I, I like his potential. He was stupendous. <laughs> I like his potential in, in in possibly moving up maybe two years from now, uh, someone that could contend for a Raw or SmackDown championship. Again, health obviously being included in that equation. But I, I'm surprised by it. I think they both work well together in the ring. And I thought it was a good, solid match. All right. WWE is rumored to have raided Booker T's WrestleMania 25 event. For those of you that don't know, Booker T runs a wrestling organization down in Houston, Texas, the site of WrestleMania 25. Houston. And there were several names YouTube signed show. for that event. And now some of those names have pulled out, and the rumors going around is that they've been pulled out because WWE pulled them out to participate in WWE Fan Access. Those names are Nick Bockwinkle, Tito Santana, Ron Simmons, and Tori Wilson, all confirmed to now be part of WWE Access. Sid Vicious also pulled out. However, he is not yet confirmed as part of the WWE Sid festivities. Sid dad should have... Oh, sorry. However, hey there now. are many more TNA talents that will be on the show, including Sting, so basically, TNA hosting an event under Booker T's uh, organization umbrella the week of WrestleMania 25, the weekend, rather, of WrestleMania 25. Gentlemen, do you think there are any, there's any validity to this story that WWE is trying to raid this charity event? All the proceeds are going to charity that Booker T's pushing the weekend of oh, WrestleMania. Absolutely. Or is it just timing where WWE may have planned to contact these people no. anyways, and it just no. so happened that no, around, not, uh, Booker not at all. Show. WWE is going through and pulling these talents out. That's how WWE operates. And they're trying to take any any attention that would have been pulled away from WrestleMania and put it back on WrestleMania. Right, and their excuse is going to be, hey, it's WrestleMania 25. WrestleMania! That's reached the point of obnoxiousness. Have you just met me today? Yeah, oh, I said that. You reached the point of obnoxiousness about 10 years ago. Frank. No, I'm done. It's okay. I don't think it's a raid at all. I think it's, uh, when you look at some of those names, though, it is suspicious because when's the last time WWE invited Nick Bockwinkle to anything? Wasn't exactly. It, wasn't it a, no, it was a Hall of Fame thing, wasn't it? No. No, I believe it was, and that's what he uh, is rumored to be in attendance for, and that's the, the, anyone that they invite to the event, they're going to pay for their airfare and all that other stuff. So uh, it was a better deal for them to have done so. Certainly no heat on these names for pulling out of that show, but I was wondering if TNA was actually going to run a house show in Houston, the week of WrestleMania or the weekend of WrestleMania, Ring of Honor is, 
has for the last couple yeah, of years. They've been successful year. with those. And uh, this appears to be the only way it's going to happen is under Booker T's, I believe, PWG organization down in Houston. Well, you can look at, at, at that angle also. You know, they, they knew that Booker T knew and TNA knew where WrestleMania was when they announced it about a year ago. And they figured, you know what, maybe we can pull something. Well, hey, did, hey, we, we you know, Booker T's lived here. He's always from here with right, the show. What are, you, what are you doing? You know what they should do, Frank, because actually if they were smart, if, if, they were smart. if TNA were smart, because Booker T does have an organization. And really, what did Booker T really say he went to TNA for? And, you know, he's got his own independent organization. Mm-hmm. They should load up this show now with TNA talent. Yeah. I mean, they could make it, you know, and they, they, they have, could like definitely said, make it a very on it. phenomenal show. I believe AJ's going to be on it as well. Lots of uh, TNA talents. Christy Hemme's going to be on it. Kevin Nash is going to be on it. It's basically, as I said, a TNA show under the PWG umbrella. Uh, but I think what you may be saying is why not just brand it as a TNA show? Get the TNA name out there. Remember since last year when they raided WrestleMania and flew an airplane over the arena and were trying to in- infiltrate WWE events, none of which happened. All that happened was they had a little, they honestly had a little trailer a trail. across the street from Access. With a screen on it. With a screen. That's it. Yeah, Access, which it was free last year, by the way, not this year. Access is charged now this year. It's charged. Remember, they're going to be taping, they're taping some matches for SmackDown, the Raw before, and then SmackDown's going to be, quote unquote, live from WrestleMania. That weekend, they're going to be doing some cut-ins live that night, but the matches will be pre-taped that previous Monday for air on Friday on my network television. Continuing talking about WWE, I think the biggest news of the week was the new interim general manager on Raw. Yep. From last week. From last week. Yes, right. Correct. Vicky Guerrero, how brilliant was that of WWE, as I truly believe she has the most heat on her than anybody else in the company. A brilliant move by WWE to put Vicky Guerrero on Raw, in my opinion. Gentlemen, your thoughts. Here's how why it works. She can even make mistakes now, and it'd be all part of the shtick. She's not very good on the stick, for one thing. The shtick, stick. The well, stick, obviously, with her being as big as she is, she shouldn't be on it at all. Right. As John Cena alluded to, <laughs> it seemed that like he was talking about the big show, but obviously talking about Vicky. But because she's not very good at what she does, Come on! It comes up. No, it's bad. But she it used to be bad. But it worked. It's still bad. But they but tried to do that it with Adam Lee too. They tried to do that with yeah, Adam Lee too. No, no. Adam Lee was just bad. He was piss poor. He was horrible. He should never have been in the position he was in. He was horrible. This is just as you bad. You suck! In my opinion. But, I, I, but it works because she's getting the reaction that WWE wants. The most heat of anyone in the company. I so think. you keep it going and it works. Most heat that is promoted, because remember, that is cranked up. That is fed into can you prove the it? arena. Can you prove it? Can you prove that it's the heat that she's getting? Can you, can can you, you prove, prove that it's not? That can it you is. prove that it is? I'm not alleging that they're that doing it. Not? Then, you, then you can't sit there and say that they're then doing it if you can't there, prove it. You we can prove that WCW did it with Goldberg because they admitted it. But you, can you prove that she gets the most heat in the company? I believe so. When you look you at the live... You believe so. Can you prove it? Based off of my observations and what I've seen when watching the programming, based off of the... Uh, feedback that you get from the live events. Just in Vicky your Guerrero, opinion. Guerrero, top of the heat. Just no, in your facts opinion. Prove it up. Facts back but, up. But all you have to do is watch the crowd. And you know what? All that noise doesn't equate to all those people. Did you watch Raw last week? I've watched Raw every week. I Did watch you watch Mac the crowd? Every week. I they were clearly the booing. Clearly, clearly booing Vicky Guerrero. Not, I'm not talking about selective one-shots where they're you know shooting different spots of the crowd. I'm talking about on hard camera. Look at the it face. was obvious. It was there. No, it wasn't. You're wrong. No, no, Let's no, go no, to the no. phone line. Wrong, wrong, Let's go wrong, to the phone line, wrong, ladies and gentlemen. You Let's were wrong. take Jacob from Rochester, New York. Jacob, you are on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. What's up, guys? Jacob. Hey, what's up, Jacob? Um, do y'all see a repeat of last year WrestleMania as in right now with Edge and the Big Show and John Cena and all that? Ooh, like when, it does have a little bit of last year in it. Well, like, last year's triple threat was Orton... Triple yeah. H and Cena. Exactly. Yeah. No way out. Remember, Orton got disqualified. Yeah. And then, well, I don't think Orton Triple H is a rehash of last year's WrestleMania at all. Singles match is a lot different dynamic than a triple threat. Yeah, and we, we probably, well, I probably thought it was going to be HHH and Orton at Mania, but what happened? Cena into that match. Yeah. 
So mm-hmm. since Edge got this call fight tonight, do you see Cena going into that match with him and Big Show? Oh, no, uh, no absolutely. Well, uh, someone did I say in so. the atmosphere that Cat it could Oster. end up being a three-way between those three. That's what I said. I, you know what? I'm like Frank here. I don't like three ways in the main event of WrestleMania. No. I thought I WrestleMania either. 20 was a d- disaster unless, with that four-way match. Unless there's an injury. WrestleMania 2000. Match. Unless there's an injury with one of the three. They, that's why they might do it. Mm. No, I think it's got to be one-on-one. I think it's got to be Edge Cena. I think so that's the money really match. You can't bury Cena in a three-way match. Well, so it doesn't make any but sense. But you can't bury Big Show, right? Yeah, but the Big Show will take on Chavo. Maybe he'll have a two-minute match this year. <laughs> they're, two, they're two heels going into WrestleMania. That's okay. That's absolutely fine. Remember two faces at WrestleMania six: Hogan, Warrior? It's yeah, been done many a time before. I don't think it's a bad thing. Obviously, you do, but I think I think what we're going to see, and we'll speculate on it much more later, but I think what we're going to see, two two-man main events, Cena and Edge, Orton, Triple H. Yeah, but do y'all know that? Matt down, come on, YouTube before it comes on TV. Well, it depends. Depends yeah. on, I mean, you know, that's, that's fine. SmackDown is taped. So, I mean, if you're seeing it on YouTube, that means you're seeing either, you know, uh, the overseas version, because right. there are different versions that air. And some of the well, stuff that you see in Canada, you're not going to see down here. And some of the stuff you see down here won't air on the Canada version. But is it a problem? I mean, here's yeah, the Yeah, it's got to be a problem. I don't think so. No, because the uh, ratings on my network TV are pretty high. SmackDown not as high as it was this time last year, as far as the ratings go. But they're still drawing are almost, always available. Exactly, they're still drawing almost as much in the ratings as WWE Raw is. So that whole argument about a tape show versus a live show doesn't really have any validity because the ratings are uh, not necessarily stronger uh, consistently on a week-to-week basis for Raw than it is for SmackDown. But to get the stuff out there actually could pique interest in what's going to happen. And for the, as far as the entire show coming up on Friday night on SmackDown. Yeah, but does that think the internet is ruining wrestling? Frank does. Well, no. I Frank think the internet that has had a wait, negative, the wrong, wrong. The internet that made has made us successful has had Damian a does. has had a negative impact on professional wrestling. Okay. And the mainstream professional wrestling fan probably not impacted, but those of us who seek wrestling news on the internet, I think it has had a negative impact. Now, has remember, it ruined it? Has it ruined it? No. But it has contributed to it negatively, in my opinion. Now, remember, it was Damien that said, the business. Yes, Damien said that he, you know, wrestling ruined it in a broad stroke, but he just gave you a better explanation. Frank thinks that ECW ruined wrestling because of the chair shot, and I think that YouTube ruined, EC, or, uh, YouTube ruined wrestling. I think overall, the Internet's negative impact on wrestling has been just simply Cat having the information out there before it happens. You can't get as surprised as much as you did, as much as you used to. How it has <laughs> helped is allowed shows like ours with our and your opinions to get out there and to truly impact the product. That's how yeah. it has helped. So and really, you have to look at which is a benefit and which is a negative. I think it's done both. It has, certainly hasn't ruined wrestling, but it certainly changed the business, much like Nitro did in 1995. Yeah, because I remember a couple of weeks back when Trish Stratus was supposed to be a surprise. They said it on the Internet before Raw even came on. Yeah, but see, here's the thing. I purposely don't read spoilers. We purposely try to give you warnings before we give spoilers because – I think part of being We've a wrestling to make this fan, go spoiler free. Part of being a wrestling fan is that surprise element. Yeah. yeah, but I guess that's the question I would ask Jacob. You heard the rumor, but then you watched. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. So it worked. Let's continue on the phone lines. Remember, you can join us two seven six three seven seven six locally or one eight hundred nine ninety three seven seven six. This is the Pro Wrestling Report on five forty ESPN. Let's take Rob from Syracuse, New York. How y'all doing today? Hey Rob. Hey Rob. What's up? Well, I just heard your little discussion there about spoilers, and um, I was actually looking at one. I'm still going to watch ECW. Okay. But I'm I'm not sure about this Money in the Bank qualifying match. Well, there is a Money in the Bank qualifier tomorrow night. It's Mark Henry versus Santino Morello on ECW. Now, was Raw taped? I mean, excuse me, ECW taped with Raw this evening. Yes. We do have the winner for that match. Let's give a little spoiler warning. Spoiler. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Here comes the warning. Uh, Mark Henry. Spoiler. Mark Henry, the third participant in Money wow. in the Bank. Oh. How is that going to work? How is that going to work? You got I Mark Henry and Kane in the Money in the Bank. I agree now. with you. Uh, uh, I think they have too many. You guys need somebody to play the low game while the, all the other yeah. guys are on top of the they ladder. Have too many. They have this too many. This could be year. like from Armageddon from three years ago, watching uh, uh, it was William Regal and Kale, uh, what's his name? Uh, well, it was more than three remember. years ago. I hope you're thinking about the uh, six pack Hell in a Cell. Mark Rikishi off the top of the cage. No, no, I'm thinking oh, okay. of. Three years ago, the ladder match, the eight-man ladder match, Armageddon. 
yeah. where uh, William Regal and uh, Cam- Dave Taylor never even touched, got up maybe three rungs of the ladder. But here's the thing. Do the people in the match, and we're going to speculate later on the other participants, the other five participants in that matchup, but do you think the people in the match matter as much as what they will deliver come match time? Because you're going to watch it. It doesn't matter. I, I mean, they could, they, Mike Knox could actually meander his way into this because he keeps getting qualifying matchups and be in the match. Yeah. He's going to swallow up actually, somebody. With but that. look I at have... look at No Way Out, remember? Uh, the raw side of the Elimination Chamber matchup and the names in there were like Kofi Kingston, Mike Knox. What sense does that make? That ended up being a, a excellent uh, delivery as far as the actual match went. So I mean, one of my roommates is a huge Mike Knox fan. He, we <laughs> found he a, him. Yeah, is he a fan of his beard too? Yeah, that's the thing. It's the burly beard. He looks like a lumberjack. He thought it was. <laughs> he just, I don't know, maybe it's the way he just walks the ring and his oily, hairy chest. I'm not sure. Your roommate's making me uncomfortable, and you're the but, one but that, that But that them. point that needs to be made is there are the fans of the Mike Knoxes of the yeah, world, why not? Of the Mark Henrys of the yeah. world, and, you know, you, it's not a one-trick pony in WWE where, you know, all the, all the eggs are in one basket. At the top of the card, of course, they generally are. But um, you know, I don't think it's going to – I'm surprised at the entrance so far, but I think as we see the final five round out, I think it's going to become another must-see match at WrestleMania. Yeah, but eight guys, way too many. Six well, there's the always, there were seven last year only because Jeff Hardy got suspended. There were supposed to be eight. Um, and uh, there, this, is, this will end up being the most that have been in it. But I think there's so much going on and so many opportunities to do different things that it won't be a, me- a mess. Yeah. Another thing I want to bring up is uh, the whole uh, Jimmy Snuka, Chris Jericho thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wanted to personally see Sim Snuka come out. Yeah. That I mean, it would have given him something some to sense. do. We, we saw him wanna, several weeks ago for a one-week wonder. I actually enjoy him as Sim Snuka over Deuce, and I want to see him actually succeed. I'd like to see him fire the Deuce. That would have, we talked about when Sim Snooker made his debut. Jimmy Snooker was in the building. Why didn't they use him then to do it and put him over? Tonight would have made some sense, but we have ru- hear rumors that Sim Snooker is going to be apparently part of this WGN program, Superstars, coming up uh, starting April 16th. Okay. And um, Manu getting fired a couple, what was it, two weeks ago now? Yeah. yeah. I, just the way he dressed, I thought he was going to tag team with uh, Umaga. Or Umaga. Umaga. However you want to say it nowadays, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, that could have been. That could have gone somewhere, but uh, do you miss him? Do you miss Manu? The, the head shrink. Do I miss his V-shaped uh, hair in his chest? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, at one point when my chest hair was growing out, when I was a man, I thought I had a big axe on my chest. Rob from Syracuse, New York. Thank, thank you for calling up. in here to the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Again, folks, you can join us two seven six ESPN two seven six three seven seven six is the number locally. Or 1-800-990-ESPN, 1-800-993-776. You can also join us live at PWRShow.com in the Chatmosphere. We're also streaming live at ESPNMilwaukee.com as well. Let's go to the news desk. A couple of news items from the past week. Uh, WWE's independent contractor lawsuit has been dismissed, so there was no winner in that lawsuit. It was dismissed. The June pay-per-view name from WWE is now Extreme Rules. That was formerly called One Night Stand. Linda McMahon has joined the Connecticut Board of Education. WrestleMania 26 has been announced for Phoenix, Arizona at the University of Phoenix Stadium. And negotiations have resumed to acquire the UWF video library from uh, the organization. Vern Gagne, as you heard on PWR Express, may indeed be charged with murder in the nursing home incident that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. WWE recently released its fourth quarter 2008 pay-per-view numbers. And those are all down, with Cyber Sunday showing the largest decline of about 41,000 buys. WWE's 2008 revenues were down overall, with DVD, merchandise sales, and pay-per-view buys being cited as the reason. TNA and WWE will go head-to-head in September, as they will be both touring the European market at the same time. Our condolences go out to Paul Heyman, who recently lost his mother, and Shark Boy, who lost his house due to a fire. The wrestler was shut out of the Oscars as it had no wins. And more information on Mickey Rourke when we talk about WrestleMania later on in this program. TNA has made his wrestling library available on iTunes. And the UFC has announced that Lesnar Mir 2 will happen on May 23rd in Las Vegas, Nevada. Ring of Honor celebrated its first set of TV tapings just over this past weekend. All future tapings will be held at the old ECW Arena in Philadelphia. And those shows will debut coming soon on HDNet. 
WWE's new superstar show on WGN will feature new matches from all three brands, and that will debut on April 16th. The March 13th edition of SmackDown will indeed be the 500th episode. That's the PWR News Desk. When we come back, we've got more talk on WrestleMania, some news and notes from TNA. Bill and Doug will join us at 11 o'clock Central Standard Time. You can also join us on the phone lines at 276-3776 or 800-990-3776. This is the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Damian Nelson, the man they call Meathead and the Cause. Here live Monday night, March 2nd, 2009. Thanks for joining us wherever you may be joining us. And remember, you can join us on the phone line at 276-3776 locally or 1-800-990-3776. We are also live at ESPNMilwaukee.com and PWRshow.com where you can join us in the chatmosphere. We talked Channel earlier, sphere. gentlemen, about the ratings. Uh, from the television programs, and WWE Raw has seen a surge in ratings over the last two weeks, basically since the No Way Out pay-per-view. The two weeks before, they scored a 3.6 and a 3.4. The two weeks after No Way Out, both got a 4.1 rating. Is this what happens when you shake things up as they did at No Way Out? No, 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 this isn't what happens when they shake things up. This is what happens when WrestleMania is coming. Well, you say that, though, but I looked at last year's ratings. Last year, the week after the, uh, sorry, the same two weeks garnered a 4.0 and a 3.5. And the two weeks prior garnered a 3.6 and a 3.4, basically the same thing. So I thought as well it was the WrestleMania bump, but that is not the case this early. There is one variable you want to add to that, and his name is Triple H. Triple H means ratings, and it's, it works in conjunction with running up to WrestleMania. So it's, the, it's Triple H you're saying? It, it, that's part of it. He's got the whole thing. Like that's that's the question. Is it the, the primary storylines? Is it the Orton Triple H thing? Is it the Edge dynamic? Is it Vicky no, Guerrero? Is no, it everything no, 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 that they're doing the on top whole, of the card? No, it's the whole brand's colliding crap. That's what it is. And they're going to give you a small little bump, but then people are going to get sick of seeing the same people on both shows or all three shows over. But SmackDown hasn't seen a bump. They've scored, got a 2.2 for the last two weeks, basically similar to what they were getting before the two weeks prior. Right now, SmackDown is dominating Raw. No. Yeah. As far as product the or SmackDown, rating? The SmackDown general managers on Raw. Oh, yeah. The SmackDown champs on Raw. The other SmackDown champs on Raw. I think it's Triple H moving to moving Raw is the majority of the reason why there's the bump. And then the rest of it is the run-up to WrestleMania. Well, and the big part of that, too, is the final admission by WWE that Triple H and Stephanie McMahon are married. Obviously, the, a lot of fans didn't know that. I mean, they've hinted at it a couple times. I think the last time they hinted at it was at the 15th anniversary of Raw or the... 750th episode, whatever it was, it was some special. Now it's explicitly stated. It's out there. Yep. This Triple H Orton thing is is pretty interesting from a fan's point of view, and I think that really is driving a lot of this. I I I agree. I, I I'm not going to disagree with that at all. I think that that is part of it, as well as many little things. Like I said, the, the build to WrestleMania is really what does it for the ratings. People are watching and going, they're waiting for All right, that. I but, guess I'm waiting for that celebrity tie-in. I'm waiting to see who's yeah. going to be the person but look that at no way Jericho out. goes you, against. You, I'm waiting to see you know, what's going to happen in all these different feuds. You walked out with two new WWE, or WWE and world champion at No Way Out. That had nothing to do with it, in your opinion? Is that after morning after intrigue, if you will, the Monday after intrigue, a lot of people tuned in to see what the heck happened on No Way Out because they probably didn't buy it. Well, after No Way Out, you needed the morning after pill, but then you realized that you actually like what they gave birth to. <laughs> you got to like that. Come on. I thought that one up about I 10 seconds before I said it. Worked, it's said it's it. not worth yeah. following up. <laughs> if it worked and kept viewers, then what's the problem with that? But they certainly did. You used to always, after a pay-per-view, get a bump in the ratings, at least that one week. And this time, it seems to have been sustained over the next several weeks. We'll see what the next couple of weeks bring. TNA having a similar story. We'll talk about that when we come back. This is the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. For 10 years, the world's number one source for professional wrestling news and information. And once again, here's your hosts. Damian Nelson, Frank Cosentino, and the man they call Meathead. This is the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are live Monday night, March 2nd, 2009. Damian Nelson, the man they call Meathead and the Cause, here in the ESPN Milwaukee studios. You can join us 
on the phone lines by calling 276-3776 locally or 1-800-990-3776 all over the world. We are also streaming live at ESPNMilwaukee.com and PWRShow.com where you can also join us in the chatmosphere. Mita, just before we took that time out, we were talking about ratings and speculating as to why the bump in WWE ratings over the last few weeks. Well, TNA has seen a bump as well, getting record ratings just two weeks ago on the March, I'm sorry, February 19th edition of Raw. Got, I'm sorry, of Impact, got a 1.3 rating, which was the highest in TNA history with 1.9 million viewers. That was the week, if you don't recall, that featured the empty arena match. Empty arena match. Halftime heat. Empty arena match. Between Sting and Kurt Angle. Between Mick Foley empty and Empty arena, yet Mike Tanay and Don West were there. Yeah, Granted, they had to call commentary, but then they showed the main event mafia in the back of the base of the ramp, but it's an empty arena match. Yeah. They got the same rating with only 1.7 million viewers because it does fluctuate. There's, it's rounded up uh, for the following week. So as we pretty much went on a tirade about TNA a couple of weeks ago, and a lot of fans have been going on tirades about TNA, the ratings are higher than ever. Unfortunately, because what, what TNA is trying to do, you've got to remember it's business. TNA is business? trying to trying to get as much uh, business going as possible, which means bringing fans in the watch. The fans that they're bringing in are the fans that want to watch Kurt Angle versus Sting. The fans that want to watch, you know, Booker T and Kevin Nash and Scott Steiner. The the people that listen to this show, unfortunately, aren't that majority. So I mean, we're gonna hear people going off about TNA. You're gonna hear us going off about TNA. Last week, the show featured less than 20 minutes of wrestling. TNA Impact, less than 20 minutes of wrestling. And we're gonna talk about Don West and Mike today and that whole thing in just a little while, but uh, before we do that, we are going to uh, go to a new segment here on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. We'd like to welcome Bill and Doug for the very first edition of Bill and Doug Uncut. Welcome to the show, guys. What's going on, guys? How y'all doing? Hey, what's up, fellas? Not much. Uh, First thing we're going to talk about is a little bit about Monday Night Raw, WWE, talk about their direction, and uh, right now, who is better who is a better heel right now in pro wrestling than Chris Jericho? That guy has run down legend after legend after legend, and he has completely changed his persona. I love the serious persona he's got going right now. And for me, it all leads to WrestleMania, and to me there's only one guy, one guy that he can face for this to make sense. And you can call me, you can say I'm in denial, you can say whatever you want, but I think it's going to be Stone Cold Steve Austin. They took him off the poster. He was originally on the poster. I think they're trying to keep this as under wraps as possible, but I think it will be Chris Jericho versus Steve Austin at WrestleMania 25, no doubt about it. Austin over Hogan? Yeah, because I think, uh, oh, yeah, I think it's a Hogan was the money match, but Austin is the match we'd rather see because Austin well, Jericho has already happened, and it's been a great match. Well, you know, we're from Houston, and I guarantee you most people that bought their tickets that, that are going to WrestleMania in Houston planned on seeing Stone Cold Steve Austin wrestle, especially when we heard he was going to the Hall of Fame. And if it doesn't happen, and especially the way they're building it, I just think it's going to be a huge disappointment. But, I mean, I'm not, I don't 100% think it's going to happen, but to me it makes sense. And we are in the WWE, and they like to do things that make sense. So, you know, uh, that, that, I think it'll work. Yeah, but, I mean, imagine they have all this buildup, and then it's Chris Jericho versus Jerry Lawler. Who oh, cares? <laughs> Who cares? Seriously. No. But, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I personally think it will be Steve Austin. I, I just, you know, they, he's originally booked for Raw appearances. I think he was supposed to be on Raw last week, uh, but they're coming to Texas for a couple of shows, so hopefully he will be on, uh, on a Raw, and hopefully they'll start building this match. I hope it happens. But uh, also, another thing I want to talk about, uh, Randy Orton and Triple H. What a segment that was. Seriously, there is, yeah. this, there's not a better feud in the WWE right now. Both of these guys are perfect at this stage in their career. You know, Triple H sometimes gets a little stale. But this is the, the perfect opportunity for him. They're telling the right story. And now that they cannot physically touch each other until WrestleMania, people are going to be craving to see this match. Yep. Yeah, you know, and it's something that uh, we've talked about here on the program the before. Philosophy. Yeah, is they shouldn't touch each other until the match. And now that they're going to be, you know, kind of around, they'll interact verbally with each other, but won't physically interact until the big show. Right. And and they did the same thing with, uh, if you remember, uh, Austin and Triple H at, before No Way Out of 2001. Yeah. And that was a golden feud. 
So, yeah. I mean, I expect nothing less than the same for, from Randy Orton and Triple H. And I hope, I hope to God when we get there that Randy Orton does win that match and become champion. I think that will solidify uh, Randy Orton's legacy in the WWE and make him a permanent main event guy. For sure. But uh, let's go ahead and talk about some TNA. I mean, we've, we've discussed Impact a little bit, uh, you know, on our, on our YouTube page. But this, this last week was kind of the first time we had the opportunity to, you know, watch Impact in a while. And I must say, you know, I, I did my ultimatum for TNA video, and I was really pissed off. I was really frustrated. I had a lot of things I wanted to get off my chest. And I'm still not overall happy with the TNA product. But some of the things that I saw – as far as them building the X Division, doing the rough cut with the X Division, is, is hopefully, I, I feel like they're going to go in a good direction here in the next month or two. But, you know, you never know. I personally think TNA is torn. I think that they marketed themselves at first towards the Smart Mark fans, and then when they got the bigger names, they're trying to get that WWE audience. Because, in my opinion, WWE is trying to re-educate the wrestling fan and trying to kill the Smart Mark. They're trying to have that whole Kogan era with John Cena and I think that that's why TNA is going with these main eventers. But, you know, Dixie sent out a letter saying, oh, thank you for the fans, and we're going to help save the X Division. We're going to rejuvenate and all that. But then you release Sanjay Dutt and Petey Williams, which makes no sense whatsoever. And, and I know they didn't release them, but they didn't resign them. But I, I, they're two of the best guys that they had, you know, in the X Division. So I don't know. I mean, who knows? If, if Abdul Bashir is what they think is going to help the X Division – for that, I mean, he was X Division champion. I, I'm worried. You know, I really yeah. am worried and concerned. And honestly, you know, I don't think the X Division re, you know, rejuvenating the X Division isn't so much about having gimmick match after gimmick match. It's not so much about having a ladder match on Impact and a street fight on Impact, an Ultimate X on pay per view, a Terror Dome on pay per view. I think it's more about just the actual marketing. You know, educate people on what the X Division is about. Have more in-ring promos with the X Division. Make the title more important. And then just go out there and have a good match. That's all that matters. I think, I think that's the one thing that TNA has gotten away from. They're just throwing out gimmick matches here left and right for the X Division. And I don't think that's what's going to get the fans behind it. I think it's more of a long-term thing. That's why they were behind it in the beginning, because you saw amazing match week after week on weekly pay-per-view in the Asylum. Isn't this a good opportunity coming into Destination X, especially with the Ultimate X match, to do that reintroduction of the X Division and take advantage of some of those things you just suggested? I personally think that they should build the Ultimate X up close to being the main event. I mean, I remember when it was Rhino and uh, Jarrett, and um, then they did uh, Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, and Christopher Daniels. They gave them the main event instead, and, I mean, that match is legendary from Unbreakable. I mean, I think that with – I don't think they're doing the proper build-up to put that in the main event, but I think that's something that they should be looking into eventually, especially coming up with upcoming pay-per-views. Just put it in the main event. I mean, it's not like people are buying the pay-per-view in the first place, so it's worth a shot. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and I also think that you cut back on the amount of Ultimate X matches they do. I mean, the bottom line is the Ultimate X match is kind of overdone. So, And, and recently you've seen Ultimate Xs that weren't half good. I mean, I remember – what was it, last year they had Team 3D and Jay Lethal and the whole Giant Divine thing when they were trying to, you know, take apart the X Division and they were trying to save the X Division. I thought it was horrible. Yep. Uh, but, you know, I, I feel like they always give it a shot and then usually just kind of scrape it after, you know, a few tries. So hopefully, I mean, we saw an amazing match. I don't know if you guys saw this, but between Alex Shelley and Chris Saban, mm-hmm. uh, their, I believe it was their first pay-per-view of the year. Yeah, uh, so they, Yeah, so, I mean, they've... They really, you know, they still put out the effort, and that's exactly what the X Division needs. And like I said, I also think it comes down to advertising and promotion. You've got to advertise. You've got to promote your X Division. And I think they need to spend less time on guys that are already established, such as the main event mafia guys, because people are already familiar with who they are. You know, they people aren't familiar necessarily with who Alex, Alex Shelley and Chris Saban and, and Jay Lethal and all these guys are. You know, you need to spend time and, and develop them and build them as stars, and then eventually people will see them that way. But, Bill, when you look at the ratings from the last two weeks of TNA Impact, which have been not, of course, their best episodes, and they've been strong, what message does that send to TNA? You know, I don't know. I, think it's, I don't think it's so much about what rating they get one week or what rating they get the next week. I think it's more of how, what is their trend of ratings over a period of six months, you know? I think they really do care about the fans. I mean, I think there's no question. I mean, Jarrett calls the fans his family. They're offering the lockdown ultimate fan interaction. Nick Foley's addressed the fans. Dixie Carter's addressed the fans. They've all thanked the fans. I think if you guys have been to a TNA Live event, you can notice that 
They really appreciate you buying the ticket and want to make you feel a part of the family, not just a part of the show. You know, I think TNA, um, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, honestly, it does say a lot. I mean, they're, they're marketing and touring in, in new areas, so I'm sure those viewers are tuning in. But, you know, do I agree that, that big names draw? Absolutely. But do I think that Scott Steiner and Kevin Nash, guys who can no longer deliver in the ring, I don't think people are necessarily tuning in to see those guys. Hmm. Uh, even though, you know, again, with their biggest ratings coming in an empty arena match. I know. <laughs> but at the, same point, at the same point, is it really people watching to see Sting and Kurt Angle face their empty arena match? Or is it people wondering what the heck are these guys doing fighting with no fans? I mean, yeah. that's what I'm curious about. People, people is it really these people that are, oh, man, I love the main event mafia? Or is it just like, oh, they're Sting and then they're just tuning in just to see him? You know what I'm saying? Like, I personally think that if, if they would set themselves up with a, something that brands them, they are, were wrestling, and that's what they should be right now because that's what separates them from the WWE because the main reason that me and Bill stopped watching the WWE for the longest time was because it didn't matter how much you stacked that pay-per-view card. They were not going to give you 100% effort, and they were not going to deliver in the ring, and it happened time in and time out to the point where we just started realizing this is crap. When we turned on TNA, TNA was delivering in the ring, and, yeah, sometimes the storylines might not be the best or the writing might be terrible, but – at the same point, when it comes to pay-per-view and you give those guys the chances to go, they will go, and that is what separates them from the WWE. And instead now, it seems like they're trying to become more like the WWE, and I don't think that they know their identity anymore. And I think yep. that's what they need to find out is they just need to brand themselves that we are wrestling. You will see something that you will not see from the WWE on our show. Yep. Speaking of the WWE, what are your thoughts on, I noticed that uh, you had an a interview segment from Jim Cornette on your YouTube page just a little while ago, your thoughts on Christian's utilization in WWE oh, so far. And that's exactly what it is. It is mutilization. And I can't believe Christian Cage signed that contract. And I personally want to know if Christian knew going in when he put his name on it, pin in the paper, when he put his name on there and he said, okay, I'm going to be with you guys. I personally want to know if they said, look, you know, we're just going to job you out for a while. And he was like, sure, that's fine. I <laughs> yeah. personally think that he signed on to something and now he's stuck into something that he did not want to be a part of because yep. there's no way he's got to be happy jobbing in Jack Swagger. Tiger, Swagger! That was Swagger. a good match. Last week, though, on ECW, they had a good match, better than I thought they could pull off, especially with Swagger in there. Yeah, I, I, mean, I think that. with Christian Cage, you're not going to have a problem with a good match, but the problem is is that the guy's not in the right position. The guy should be right up there with Edge, in my opinion. I mean, and I think everybody thinks that. If, if you've been a fan of, for, of WWE for a long time and you've seen Christian and Edge, you know that, in my opinion, they're pretty equal to each other. Yeah, I, I definitely believe that. Um, also, you know, if you if one of my favorite points from the Jim Cornette interview was the fact that if Vince and the people in WWE Creative were smart, they would have booked Christian Cage as a at least a top guy. That way, when the TNA guys' contracts come up, they're thinking, wow, you know, Christian went back to the WWE. They gave him a shot. They put him in a really good position. Maybe I'll give that a shot. Maybe I'll give it a try. But instead, they're just burying him in the ground. Now, do you think any TNA guys want to go to the WWE now? I really doubt it. Well, and, and that's a TNA guy that has had a lot of experience. It's like yeah. eight-time Intercontinental Champion over there. Imagine just a Sanjay Dutt or something that, yeah. like that comes over there. You know what's going to happen? He's going to be a Braden Walker. Yep, I agree. You can join us, folks, on the Pro Wrestling Report phone lines at number 276-3776 locally or 1-800-990-3776 all over the world. Again, 1-800-990-3776. We are live on ESPNMilwaukee.com. We are also live at PWRShow.com where the Chatmosphere is rolling right along. Chad well, Doug, uh What else do you have for us this week on the Pro Wrestling Report? Um, let's think. Uh, me Ring of Honor pay-per-view in Houston. That's that's the one thing I want to touch base on just real quick. I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt, Doug. Go for uh, it, Bill. Damien, are you going to be down uh, like on Friday? Are you going to go to any of the Ring of Honor shows? Uh, Unfortunately, I will not be attending WrestleMania this year. Oh, and it's something that Damien, oh. it's something that Damien and I have uh, kind of struggled over the last two months trying to figure out how we're going to work this out. If you don't know, uh, for those that are listening, Damien and I have done the last three WrestleManias together, and this, you know, as much as I don't like him, I do enjoy <laughs> spending a wrestling weekend with my brother from another mother. But we cannot make the show. It's my this annual year. vacation, and I've got some other commitments that weekend that I uh, just simply can't get out of. So unfortunately, wow, I can't go. Right, we yeah. got. We've got ROH Chow Show on Friday. We've got ROH Pay-Per-View on Saturday. We've got Hall of Fame Saturday night, and then we're going to WrestleMania. 
Yep. Doesn't get much better than that. And oh, Friday night, Booker T is having that convention. Did you guys talk about that a little bit earlier? About yeah, we did, and the names that have been recently pulled and uh, speculation yeah, as to yeah. why. How much crap is that? I mean, this guy is raising money for a charitable foundation in Houston, and the WWE is taking guys away from there on Friday night when they really don't have much going on. They've got access going on that whole week. Right. So they re sign guys to go to their access so that they cannot participate in Booker T's uh, you know, charity fan fest that he's doing with a bunch of big names. I mean, granted, they're not going to get the TNA guys, but I just think it's really shady and classless of them to take away the guys that were scheduled. Correct. If that's their intention, we completely agree. Uh, but you look at what's happening, and we talked about earlier, it seems as if there's a TNA-branded show happening under Booker T's PWG brand, which is awesome. But the is PWA? it smarter? Yes. Is it oh. smarter for TNA to actually brand that show as one of their shows and get that WrestleMania presence that they had last year and fill it with TNA talent? Yeah, I absolutely. agree. I mean, we've been to PWA shows before, and it's usually just the main event, and then after that you can get your autograph or your picture yeah. taken with them for an extra and couple And they've got bucks some pretty and, talented and, guys uh, at the PWA, and, I mean, you want to talk about fan interaction, dude. Booker T is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Yep. I mean, he is very courteous. I remember the Polaroid ran out of film. <laughs> okay, and, and he got pissed. He was like, you know, he's like, Charmel, what am I going to do? So he called all the fans back that didn't get a good picture, and he took pictures of all of them over again. I mean, he's just such a nice, classy guy. I and mean, he, he always has guests, and, and his students are very talented. Yep. Bill and Doug Uncut, the debut edition here on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you again next week right here on this very program. We're going to take a time out, ladies and gentlemen. When we come back, it's more on WrestleMania, more on TNA. We've got our VI3 and a heck of a lot more, including our Q&A, some of your emails coming up here on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and com. This is Luke Balmuti of the Milwaukee Bucks, and you're listening to 540 ESPN. Sorry about your damn love. <laughs> Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report at 540 ESPN. Damian Nelson, the man they call me that, here live with you Monday night, March 2nd, 2009. We welcome everybody listening to us on your iPods. We're available on iTunes. You can search the podcast, PWR Live, and subscribe and get the latest episode of the Pro Wrestling Report on ESPN dropped right to your portable device, whatever that may be. Usually it's an iPod. Okay, that's fine. Hey, the first edition is in the books. Of? Were you on the show? You interacted with oh, the Bill guys. Oh, Bill and Doug and Cut. It's a good segment. We appreciate Bill and Doug coming on. They'll be on with us every week, 11 o'clock, top of the hour, uh, Central Standard Time. You can also check out their video updates at pwrshow.com. You can link on over to their YouTube channel as well and uh, go ahead and learn more about them. Meathead, let's talk about WrestleMania. Uh, the speculation from Bill and Doug was that it would be Jericho Austin at WrestleMania, which is an interesting dynamic, but rumors seems to flow more and more towards Hawk Hogan being or Hulk. in that match at Hulk. WrestleMania. I have a problem with L's. Has a pro- uh, being at WrestleMania. We broke that Asian? news. We broke that news <laughs> on this show. <laughs> we broke that news on this show about three weeks ago, and then everyone else took it and ran Jesus. with it. Am I speaking Chinese? Apparently, Thanks, Chuck uh, Hogan, Jericho is potentially there for WrestleMania. But I caution you with this: WrestleMania 20. Leading up to the event, everybody said, Hogan's got to be in it. Hogan's got to be in it. It's the 20th anniversary of WrestleMania. They'll work it out. They'll get the money all the worked 25th out. 25th anniversary. Hogan's got to be in it. Oh, 20. I'm, I'm referring to WrestleMania 20. Remember when everyone was saying, Hulk yeah. Hogan's got to be a part yeah. of it. Hogan had nothing to do with WrestleMania 20. He was actually part of WrestleMania 21. Uh, so it's not as obvious as some people may think that it be Hulk Hogan, who has gone out Hulk. and made public statements that he's talking with Vince and that he's looking for a way to be in the show. But we know what that means when Hulk Hogan does it. It means he's looking for more money. It means he's leveraging the media to get more money out of his appearance with WWE. But I do think that a Hogan-Jericho match is on par with an Austin-Jericho match at WrestleMania. I think either one could be a money match. But is this the match Austin would come back for? Because remember he said it's got to be the right time, place, situation. This isn't the match for Austin. The only situation, time, and place. Uh, would be WrestleMania, you know, in Texas. So I guess that works out, but I don't think Jericho's a match, and that's not a slight on Jericho at all. It's a good point. Uh, WrestleMania uh, apparently also going to potentially feature Trish Stratus returning to the ring again. 
Rumor has it that they've reached out to her, interested in using her for a female match. Obviously, last we saw, Trish Stratus was when she returned on Raw in Toronto a couple of weeks back to high accolades. Mickey Rourke talked about the Oscars and the wrestler not winning an award, but he's going to appear at the fan access event. So Mickey Rourke will indeed be a part of WrestleMania. Will we see him in a match meet, do you think? Mickey Rourke? Absolutely not. Let's go to the PWR phone lines. Remember, you can join us, folks, 276-3776 or 1-800-990-3776. We're talking about WrestleMania 25, the 25th anniversary of WrestleMania. Let's go to Terry and Waukesha. You're here on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Gentlemen, how are you doing this evening? We're Excellent. doing. Um, I liked a couple segments of Raw. I liked the Jericho uh, Snuka segment. I was hoping that Sim Snuka was going to do a run-in on that one. That was a nice segment. All these uh, people, I, I'm surprised all these people are looking for Sim Snuka. I mean, well, it's just people looking ahead and thinking that they're booking. Rob from Syracuse Everybody earlier. thinking that they're booking a show in advance. Okay, well, if it's Snooker, then it's got to be this, this. I mean, it's more likely to have Tim Snooker maybe have a match with him next week. Right, and then um, I like the build up with the Triple H, uh, Triple H Orton angle. I thought that was pretty. That was pretty good. Um, <clears throat> a couple. Of, any any idea that maybe you know you're talking about Austin? You know, coming back right time, right place. Um, I read. I was reading that Austin always wanted to fight Hogan. Do you think that is even at all possible as a kind of like, hey, For look, we're going, put, we're going to put these two guys against you? Well, remember what happened at, I think, the 2005 or six Hall of Fame induction ceremony when Hogan and Austin were in the same room and Hogan challenged Austin, basically. And then on Raw, Hogan challenged Austin again, which is a lot of things a lot of people forgot about. And Austin has since stated that Hogan was just showboating, trying to force him into the yep. match. Uh, in a public forum. You know, I, I don't think that's the match. I don't know what the match is. We know that Austin will come back if he came came back for the Austin match. Austin Goldberg I don't know what that would is. be a match, too. Yeah, and the, my other thing is is that I've been watching. I'm a, I am really like TNA guys. I've watched TNA since they were like, uh, the, when they did their, you know, weekly or monthly pay-per-views. And I'm just really kind of sad about the state of TNA right now. They've gotten rid of a lot of the good young talent. And, I mean, now I just I just read on the internet the other day that you know Booker T's turning 44. I mean most of the main event mafia who are the guys that people that everyday casual wrestling fans want to see on TV, which to me I guess I've come to the realization that that people like me are few and far between. But you know nowadays you were you were more pandering toward the casual wrestling fan who wants to see you know basically garbage wrestling on TV that they want, you know, we want to have this, that, and the other thing. So right, and we've to, me, had this, to me, that's kind of sad. I mean, I hear I hear you guys out there talking about, you know, it's all business and all this mm-hmm. and that. As a pure, as a purist wrestling fan, that really just makes me frustrated and actually makes me want to actually, like, put down, you know, wrestling as a hobby. I mean, to me, it's been something I've, I've, I've had since I was 16 years old. Mm-hmm. And, it's you know, unfortunate now 40. Because, and it's unfortunate, too, because... <laughs> Uh, wrestling is not geared for a 40-year-old individual. Wrestling is not geared for Damien. Wrestling is not geared I'm not for... 40. I didn't say you were 40. Wrestling is not geared towards Damien. It's not geared towards me. The only... uh, wrestling is geared towards the children. Come like... after me! I'm, I'm a man! man. I'm, I'm 40. 40! I was setting you up, by the way, for that, Dragon. Wrestling is geared towards Dragon, our 12-year-old producer here. Uh, that's the word. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's geared towards so unfortunately you know we still have to find the little caveats you know in wrestling that we enjoy let's continue talking about wrestlemania a couple of matches are quite obvious right now triple h versus randy orton for the wwe championship edge versus john cena for the world championship as we saw tonight on raw undertaker versus hbk for uh obviously the undertaker streak at wrestlemania we've got three participants in the money in the bank ladder match cm punk mark henry which will happen on ECW tomorrow, and Kane. But Meathead, five, whoop, whoop, five whoop, whoop, more whoop, names whoop. to be named. Who do you think is going to be rounding out the participants Mike Knox. in that matchup? Mike Knox. Okay. Uh, <sighs> Mike Knox. Mike Knox. Um, John Sorry. Morrison will sneak in, uh, sneak in again. John Knox, Morrison. Morrison. MVP. MVP. And um, I don't know. Miz? Yeah, maybe. But how did both Ray of Ray? Those, What's Ray did... Ray going to do if he's not in this matchup? Granted, he didn't qualify Sell merchandise. tonight. merchandise. He's going to go work the gimmick table. <laughs> Swing! That'd be the most successful gimmick table in the history of professional wrestling. <laughs> I think it's going to be Morrison. I think you certainly got to look at um, Ray Mysterio, as I said. I think the Miz as well. Christian, obviously, would be strong in that matchup. 
Uh, I think we're going to see the participants, of course, over the course of the next five weeks, line up a little more. But this match has a lot of potential. No matter what it is, it's Shelton Benjamin. Granted, he's the United States champion. Hopefully, because I'm certain they won't be defending that or the Intercontinental title at WrestleMania. We already know the Intercontinental title will not be defended. But uh, Shelton Benjamin, who's been in just about every Money in the Bank ladder match, uh, is the superstar of the match each time he's in it. And even if he doesn't win it, just simply watching and performing that match is almost worth the price of admission. Hmm. Uh, five WrestleManias in five weeks, Meathead. Our top five WrestleManias. This week we're going to give you our fifth best WrestleMania as we have seen it over the course of the last 24 events. And for me, number five, not number one, which is going to surprise a lot of people, number five is WrestleMania three. Really? You had Hogan and Giant, which was the match. I still remember Hogan or Giant ripping off Hogan's necklace in, in the uh, pit. In the Piper's Pit, I believe it was, when the match was made. And it really had all the glamour and spectacle of a big match. Also on that card, I still remember the snake being unleashed on Jake Roberts by Alex Cooper. It wasn't released on Jake Roberts. It was released for Jake Roberts by Alex Cooper, but it was released. The Dr. Style slick and the suit ripped off. Obviously, the Randy Savage, Ricky Steamboat matchup. So much happened on that show, WrestleMania 3. That is, in my opinion, the fifth best WrestleMania of all time as we count down here on the five week of WrestleMania. So you want my number on five? On the fifth week of WrestleMania, Meathead gave to me. You know what you guys missed out on before the show started tonight? And I'm trying to let Damian catch his breath here. Uh, before I've got the, a cold. I know. I've used this cough button a lot. Tonight. I know. Uh, before the show started tonight, when uh, Frank heard Cena's music start, he started singing, John Cena. And I was like, my name's John Cena. You can't Cena. Okay, anyway, Damian. <laughs> Are you, yes. are you rested now? I, I'm ready. I'm okay. back. I'm also done and ready for your fifth uh, WrestleMania. Number of five time. of my top five WrestleManias of all time will have to go out to WrestleMania 22. Really? Do you know why? It was your first. It was my first. Uh, I also got to see uh, Conan the Destroyer come out for a match against best John Cena. Best Triple H entrance ever. ever. One of the best wrestling entrances ever. ever. The King of Kings. And John Cena. And I remember the whole ramp came up. Yep. JBL's limo came down. Yep. The limo came down. So WrestleMania CM 22 Punk was for you. Hanging 22 off of... years it took to get the top five WrestleManias for you. Yeah. All right. That's the number five. We encourage you fans all over the world to send us your top five WrestleManias of all time. As we go over the five weeks of WrestleMania, we will go ahead and read your comments right here on air as well, including on PWR TV, which returns to the airwaves next week. The top five WrestleManias leading into WrestleMania as you, the viewers, see them as well. Let's go to the PWR phone lines. Let's go to Memphis, Tennessee, which I drove by the pyramid just a few days ago. <laughs> I love that arena. Curry Ed, you're here. What's up? What's up, Damien? I'm fine yeah. the frog here, split four ways. That's good, Damien. That's good, man. Uh, there's What's word. Up? What's hey, up, me here? There's word in the chat sphere that uh, Curry Head was just walking through West Dallas over the last couple of days, and he saw some of the girls and kept his pimp hands strong. Uh, and by the way, in internet language, pimp stands for pissing in my pants. Uh, yeah, I was in West Dallas, man. I actually was. What do you think of WrestleMania, the way it's shaping up so far? Ooh, I need to slap the writers. I need to get that, get the, get the, get the, uh, God, get the tap and pound and just get that just get that slapping on. I don't know what's going on. I just got to say this about WrestleMania. Uh, I like the Triple H match. I'm enjoying it. It's it's fun. It's exciting. It's it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of personal. I'm kind of don't understand the whole deal between the Cena Edge and Big Show matches. It's, it's confusing, and I hate Vicky Guerrero. Well, Vicky I mean, me. She needs to wear sleeves. Excuse me. She needs to wear sleeves and lots of clothing. She's been wearing at least half she sleeves needs, lately. She needs a bolt of material just to cover <laughs> her. <laughs> a bolt. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Go ahead, though. But I don't think the three ways going to happen. The three ways simply bridge to WrestleMania. It's certainly going to be, in my opinion, Cena Edge at WrestleMania because that makes the most sense. Putting Big Show in it just, I mean, it, it'll add a dynamic. Because remember, what they haven't addressed is that whole interaction between Vicky and Big Show when Edge was out and Big Show was taking care of her. So that's got oh, a little please, bit of please, please, there. Please, 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 don't, don't make me think of that. That's, that's worse than seeing, hearing your producer speaking. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> dragon. <laughs> don't pick on Dragon. He's, he's 85 pounds of pure muscle. <laughs> I, I, 
85 pounds of pure much, but I'm not going to mention it. Hey, now. Is. Go ahead. We are just about out of time here. On the uh, before I start, I yeah. just want to say this. I just want to say this before I leave. Uh, this Hall of Fame thing and this Legends thing with Jericho, Lauder, I've been listening to the local shows with Lauder down here, you know, and I also used to be his neighbor, but don't, I can tell you stories about that, but I won't. Uh, it is possible they they really keep it this hush hush because as Lauder mentioned WrestleMania, he is he says that he will give WrestleMania like that. I understand what Vince McMahon is trying to keep everything a secret for. It's not the internet that rules, it's the bad writer and the internet because WrestleMania and wrestling has become predictable. The storyline has become predictable like two months in advance. Mm-hmm. And like I had said before, wrestling isn't written for us, unfortunately. Wrestling is written for Dragon, you know, our producer, and, you know, the other kids in the audience. Yes, I know, I understand that. <laughs> and, my best, and my best friend still thinks that Christian is not going, it's going to get a good push, and I explained it to him, he don't know Vince McMahon. Well, but I got to... Well, I thanks, got to go now. Thanks for calling, Currahead. You guys can join us as well, 276 ESPN. We are here on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN, also streaming at ESPNMilwaukee.com and 540, I'm sorry, ESPNMilwaukee.com and PWRShow.com. This is the Pro Wrestling Report. We'll be back in just a moment here on 540 ESPN and, again, ESPNMilwaukee.com. I used to go by this high school, bro, you know? Yeah, what, and go hang out with them? No, I used to, that's what... People that was your gimmick? Yeah. yeah. This is the Slickster talking at you, honey. I'm still the doctor of style. Remember when uh, okay, the one-man Abercrombie... gang changed into uh, Rakim? No. Was it Rakim? The African the dream. dream. Yeah. And then I... he did this thing with his hands. <laughs> Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Thank you so much for joining us live Monday, March 2nd, 2009. Let's talk about TNA Total Nonstop Action. Because, you know, apparently, all of us are TNA marks because... You can't ever like anything that the mainstream jerks out there don't like. So we're, I'm proud to be. I should say, like I said in 2006, I have been and always will be a TNA mark. <laughs> but I just gave a sound bite to the Republicans. Yeah. And, and 1998, I've done sound bites here plenty of times. 1998, <laughs> you said, uh, I don't ever see WCW ever the making it. Is incorrect. The dictionary is incorrect. Yeah, that, that just sounds so intelligent. The dictionary is incorrect. <laughs> Apparently, I've made sound bites. Webster's smarter than you. But anyway, total nonstop action. Last week on Impact Meathead, Don West and Mike today got into it. Don West walked out. I think he stole Damian Nelson's gimmick. I've done that to you many a time. But Mike Tanay's not nearly as annoying as you are. Uh, Mike Tanay is good in person. <laughs> uh, we've got a drum roll. I'll be here all, all right. week. Try the That's a post. rim shot. Listen, though, Don West walks out. Here's what I noticed during that, and I never thought of it before. Don West would make a good on-air character as a manager, an antagonist. You know what else something. I noticed, too, in this whole thing? Mike Tanay made the same angry face that he makes when he's doing other work. His gimmicks. constipated face? Yeah. Yeah. Came out of nowhere. Don't know where it's going. Rumors are that Mick Foley might take the place of Don West at the announce table. I'd be surprised to see that because I think it would be better if Don West returns to the announce table and becomes that antagonistic heel. Right. Color because, commentary because we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. In a while, exactly. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago. That today and West, uh, who's the play-by-play man and who's the color man? It's difficult to uh, to tell when you listen to some of their shows uh, that they've done over the years with TNA. But I think this is an opportunity now to create that divide, and it really does add a dynamic to the program when your two announcers don't like each other. Yeah, uh, you know that was some of the best times when you had Jr. and the King barking at each other, or when Jay over took over Raw and had his own little booth. <laughs> raw is JR. JR is raw back in 1999. Got you got your little moose in your hair. Got your little narrow ass. Well, what thanks did it get for it, Michael? Go ahead and watch JR it. JR just wants to go to work. Go ahead and watch it on PWRShow.com. Just want my job back. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was well done. Uh, again, because it surprised me and no one expected it. I just hope, because it, even now, I uh, think there was a TNA Today or Don West special or they were announcing fan interaction or something, and Don West is on there. Him and JB they never mention it, as far as I could tell. Never mention that whole angle. Perpetuate the angle in that, that as well. I mean, Don, there's some explaining to do here, and you want to really hear. Don West, of course, explained it a little bit on Impact, but there's more to this that we need to find out. 
uh, from a fan's point of, point, of, point of view and a viewer's point of view, and I hope we get that at least coming up this week on Impact. Also on Impact last week, Samoa Joe uh, went hardcore, I guess, and pulled a knife, a sword, that kind of that's cutting that's device. That's not a knife. Stacy's a knife. On Scott Steiner in the dressing room. They talk about crossing the line, but did this go too far, almost as far as the Brian Pillman gun incident on Raw from several years ago. No, but you know what? They got people watching. Because Brian Pillman was the loose cannon. Yeah, but Samoa Joe isn't. I mean, they had a guy pull a knife on another guy in the dressing room. That's not Sid Vicious. Look out! He's got a knife! Oh, yeah, Sid Vicious pulled out a pair of scissors on Arn Anderson. Oh, it's a cutting mechanism. It's all the same. I thought this was a little too far. I thought they crossed the line a little too far, not to abuse that cliche. But I like the dynamic with Scott with uh, Samoa Joe coming back uh, as the monster. But Scott Steiner, really? I, I mean, I don't know how many more times I can say I'm just done with Steiner. I, just He serves no purpose for me on TNA. The only Any thing wrestling he, at all. The only thing he did well was when he did commentary with Kevin Nash, which was which surprisingly, surprisingly yeah. good. Yeah. We talked about TNA lockdown. TNA already showing major focus on that. As we talked to you a couple of weeks ago, they're focusing on four major pay-per-views a year, lockdown being one of them. They've announced their first uh, travel packages to Philadelphia for that event, also announcing the Interactive Fan Festival. They've already sold about 1,000 tickets for the event, which is said to be strong so far for TNA. Remember, last year, lockdown was the most purchased pay-per-view from TNA Wrestling, not bound for glory, and it's rumored that the events so far this year have garnered less than 20,000 pay-per-view buys. I believe their average last year was about 35,000 buys per show. And the rumored main event for that is Sting versus Mick Foley. Mick Foley in the ring? Uh, that's usually where professional wrestling matches occur. Unless they're in empty arena matches. Which, it still happened in the ring. Yeah. But still in an empty arena. Or in a backstage brawl. Or in a parking lot brawl. Dixie Carter, Meathead. Or in a false count anywhere. After I'm not TNA done. got those record ratings, had a, 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 well, a, a, a thank you message to the wrestling fans. She said this, I want to take this opportunity to personally thank all of you for making last Thursday's edition of TNA Impact the most watched broadcast in our company's history. In 2009, we will celebrate seven years in the business. The little company who no one gave a chance has grown by leaps and bounds because of you, our fans. We'll continue to work hard to earn your support. Several big things are already planned, including April's brutal all-steel cage pay-per-view lockdown in Philadelphia, new superstars, new programming, a reinvigorated focus on the X Division, expansion of our online digital world, and so much more. Once again, thanks to all of you. You are loyal and passionate, and we don't take this opportunity you have given us for granted. Bravo, Damien, by the way. I'm hitting the uh, applause button there. Uh, Good job to cover up the coughing. Good job. Now, she says this, a reinvigorated focus on the exhibition. <laughs> As Bill and Doug alluded to in their uncut segment, they let Sanjay Dutt go. They let Petey Williams go. And when I say let go, they simply didn't renew their contracts, couldn't come to agreement on new terms for the contract. How could you say you've got a reinfor- reinvigorated focus on the exhibition when you let two of your best exhibition performers go? Granted. You still got Saban, you still got Shelly, you still got Suicide, who is Daniels right now. You still got a lot of good performers in the but, division. But what you're saying to me right now is that the X Division is the cruiserweight division. Who's to say that these other guys can't be in the X Division? Tomo oh, Joe, they can. AJ Styles. Oh, they can. Remember, X Division was not division about weight limits. Style. It was about no limits. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, you just listed off every cruiserweight. I just listed off two of the best performers who have been synonymous with the X Division that they recently released before sending out this statement saying that they have a reinvigorated focus on the X Division. And as Bill and Doug said earlier, what is the X Division? Does the new TNA TNA fan know what the X Division is or what to expect from the X Division? Right. Maybe they ought to do a retrospective, a history on it, you know, just show a a montage of different matches that the X Division has had. That's where you talk. I was processing. Takes a moment sometimes. Um, but Dixie Carter sending out, you know, it's a good class move by TNA to thank the fans and to, uh, this was posted on their website to, uh, at least get it out there that they appreciate the fact that so many it's people like, are You know, in. it's like WWE saying we're going to have a reinvigorated tag team division. Well, remember when Vince McMahon came on Raw back in, I believe it was 1997 and said, we're no longer going to insult you with good versus evil, good guy versus bad guy. We're changing the business. We're going to give you the fans what you want. And that was pretty much the launch of the Attitude Era in WWE. And uh, I don't think it's a bad thing for them to acknowledge that. 
Speaking of the X Division, Destination X coming up in just a few weeks on pay-per-view. Matches we know of so far, Booker T versus AJ Styles for the Legends Championship. Sting versus Kurt Angle for the TNA Championship again. And then the Ultimate X match, which hopefully will not be Rhino versus James Storm, as it was last time we saw the oh, Ultimate X match. Oh, wasn't it on a... a horrible. Wasn't there a scaffold, too? Yeah, well, that's... Yeah. No, that was a scaffold match. I'm sorry. Yeah. You are correct. I wrong. know I am. Say it again. Wrong. That was a scaffold match. A mark the tape, Dragon. I'm wrong twice a year. That can be one of them. This is the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. We're going to take a timeout when we come back. It's our VI3 and more news from professional wrestling. I feel like I just heard this a minute ago. The time was now, but I guess the time was a few moments ago as well. We did that just to upset you because we know how much the people in the chat atmosphere. Chat atmosphere. Chat atmosphere. Chat atmosphere. Fuck wow, God, oh chat atmosphere. Chat atmosphere. <laughs> this is the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Monday night, March 2nd, 2009. Thanks for joining us. Damian Nelson, the man they call me dead. We are going to go right into our VI3. Each week we pick the three wrestlers, uh, single, female, and tag team. In the world, the top three, and Meathead, you always start because as I look in front of you, you have no notes, just a bell. And a laptop, obviously. Go. My female in the VI3. She you always was, start with the female as well. She was on Raw this evening. Already in the ring, but music finished. No, 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 no. She came out to her music. Her oh, name. Usually they do. Her name was Omega James. That's the female in my VI3. My male. Was there Santino on Raw tonight? Yes. He was part of that tag match. I he was part of that tag due to my match. He was part of that tag coming match. from home to the studio. He was part of that tag match. Great. The yeah. male in my VI3 will be Randy Orton. Again, very, very hot segment. And the tag team for that segment, you know, I'll go to Priceless. Cody Rhodes and <laughs> Ted DiBiase. And your single competitor. I just said I Randy Orton is single. I was not paying you any attention. Randy is single. The tag team is Priceless. Pay attention. The definitive, I only listen to myself. The definitive top, or VI3 list. Boom, that was the time. Definitive VI3 list, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, Jack Swagger. I can't even believe I just did that. Swagger. ODB, because she's just too dang unfunny. And uh, the tag team of the Miz and Morrison. Check out the dirties on WWE.com and find out why. Let's go to uh, the PWR phone lines. We've got Bowman from Boston, who was indeed in what I still like to call the Fleet Center. For Raw tonight, Bowman. How was Raw being there live? Um, it was a so-so show. I mean, I got the chance to watch them do a 20-minute segment between Randy Orton and Triple H for them to tell me they're going to give me the same main event at WrestleMania last year, minus John Cena. Correct. And oh, for Triple H to rub his nose on Randy Orton's face for a bit, uh, 10 minutes of it. Uh, I thought I saw snot in the out of his nose, but that's you know. Other than that, it was a, it was a very kind of a subpar show. The Chris Jericho kind of interview thing with uh, Snooker was kind of hard to watch live because it was just slow and kind of. Ooh. They're gonna edit that very well <laughs> when it when it actually ends up and when he end up like replaying it on TV. Yep. And uh, other than that, it was it was just a regular raw. I really didn't get the see much of much of anything else other than what seems to be a lot of talking. Oh yeah, and seems like Shawn Michaels can beat Cobblock with two moves. <laughs> I think I could be no, I probably couldn't. Okay. Bowman, we are out of time. Thank you so much for calling in with that live report from WWE Raw in Boston tonight. Meathead, we'd like to thank all of our viewers as well and listeners. PWR had a great month last month on the website, especially with over half a million page views, fifty thousand visitors, and uh, just over a hundred thousand views of our television product all over our worldwide worldwide television networks this is the pro wrestling report on 540 espn thank you so much for tuning in we'll see you next week right here again monday night right after wwe raw